To be honest guys, when I see a Zumigi on defense, I cry a little bit inside, you know? Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about the Zumigi comps. Oh my lordy. I just really want to preface this video by saying that like honestly, Zumigi, like I can only talk about so much theory, right? There is so much like randomness and like just a lot of like chaos when it comes to Zumigi. I'm not going to even pretend to be an expert. I'm just going to explain to you guys what I kind of know. And then I also want to run through a whole bunch of example comps on PCRD fans because to be honest I think most Tsumugi comps have been like kind of explored and investigated and so like hopefully if you guys do come across one you'll be able to find the counter on PCRD fans however if you do come across a Tsumugi comp that is not on PCRD fans that I would either suggest a like you run or b like try some of these advices that we're going to talk about today you guys can already tell like I have a rough time with Tsumugi I think most people have a rough time with Tsumugi and I guess with that being said let's jump into the video so generally speaking, Tsumugi comps always run at least two tanks. If I scroll through all of this, you're going to see that Tsumugi is almost always like on the third position. And typically she is only on the second position when she is used on attack. However, like she is on the third position because she is a little bit squishy. From a defense point of view, it's not like overly reliable to have Tsumugi on the second position. So that's why you're going to be able to like see her pretty much. Yeah, I don't think there's a single Tsumugi that's not on position three actually. But yeah, that typically covers off the front typically you've got like the Miyako Kuka combo sometimes you've got the Lima and the Nozomi combo in addition to Lima some people combine with Kuka however you don't usually combine Lima with like your Miyako and the reason is because Lima and Miyako are both physical tanks and so like you want to kind of be like branched out or like cover a little bit more of like the magic damage as well right if I keep scrolling through I don't know if I'm gonna find much more but yeah that's like kind of it so there's one over there but yeah like the front part of it is actually really really easy to understand it's really really traditional so like you've got the physical and then you've got the magical tank some people also use Jun however I don't really like Jun that much especially like at three or four stars I do think that especially for defense that Nozomi is way better than Jun but yeah quickly scrolling through this like you guys should be able to see the general composition right at the very least you got two tanks and then Tsumuki and so that being said let's talk about the back so there are kind of like two different approaches that people usually take and the first is more of like a DPS oriented approach so over here you've got like the Yukari and then you've got the Skiaru. However, for this comp in particular, what screams out to me is that there's not really anything like stopping a Tamaki from taking out that Skiaru. And so that's a massive reason as to why like Kuka is typically featured. So you see a Kuka there, you see a Kuka over here. Let's keep going. Uh, no Kuka over here. That is a really brave comp. I've never seen something like that before. I'm not going to talk much about that one because I don't know if it works or not. But yeah, Kuka over there, Kuka over there to protect that Hatsune. But yeah, in a nutshell, that's kind of like the first comps that you're going to be seeing. Like something like this over here right and then the second type of comp that you're actually going to see with Tsumuki is uh this boy over here so these guys are really really freaking annoying because it's like a straight up battery stall comp it's not like it's pure stall either because Tsumuki actually does damage as well but with Tsumuki constantly like displacing all of your units and getting to walk back and forth it's just like so freaking annoying but that's kind of the idea of like this kind of variant with the batteries on the back otherwise i have seen one more let me see if i can actually find it so it's uh it's this one over here so essentially you've got a Maho on the end. Maho, again, the defense for that is pretty obvious. However, like remember that like this is pretty much doing no damage aside from the Tsumugi. But yeah, that's essentially like your composition of a Tsumugi comp, right? Like your Tsumugi is almost always on position three. Well, pretty much always. I don't think I saw a single one that has like a Tsumugi on position two or four. And then on the back, you can either attack on batteries or support for a more stall style, or you can attack on like DPSs like this to hopefully kill them off. And so with all of this in mind, how exactly should we be beat this. Well, the first thing that you need to think about, especially for Tsumugi comps, is that the Tsumugi is constantly pulling out your second in position. And what I mean by that is, let me go over to my character window. Let me click on Tsumugi and show you her skill. I believe it's the skill two. Nope, it's the skill one. Yep, there we go. Deals small physical damage to the enemy in the second position and draws them slightly closer. And so what this skill does from Tsumugi is it's essentially forcing you to actually pick up a second tank, or rather run like two really tanky units up the front at least and so from an attacker's point of view like you've already lost that flexibility you kind of like almost always have to have two tanks or else that second position is dead for example if you're trying to break that stall comp variant let me get back to it if you were trying to break something like this like the first thing that comes to mind for me would be like Jun, Kari, Makoto, Akari and Skiaru and the reason
reason is pretty simple, right? Because that's a classic Stormbreaker comp. It's full defense down and then like hopefully it'll tear through everything. However, what's going to happen is that freaking Zumugi is going to like pull your freaking Makoto or your Kari up to the front and it's going to actually get them killed. Generally speaking, even a store comp is able to actually like kill off DPSs if they are vulnerable. And honestly, that is really annoying. It's really funny, but it's really, really annoying. And so yeah, generally speaking, that's why you run two tanks. It could be like you run a Miyako and a Nozomi. That's probably like my favorite combination. Otherwise, if you can get away with it, sometimes you can run one tank if it's like really stall enough. I reckon that Maho comp before that we saw, like you can probably run just one tank. But otherwise, one of the other alternatives is possibly Yukari. But like, yeah, again, oh man, all, all these comps are really, really specific. What I have noticed, guys, however, is like to beat Tsumugi comps, generally speaking, I have seen a lot of Ilya comps win. Now, unfortunately, personally, I do not have Ilya. So if you guys do have Ilya, that should be music to your ears. But generally speaking, Ilya comps are protected by at least two tanks, if not like a tank and then a Yukari, something like that. And then she should be enough to actually burst down. So I'm actually looking at a comp like this and I'm thinking an Ilya is definitely going to work here. But yeah, I think we've gone through a lot of the different theory. And so with that being said, let's jump into some comps. So hopefully you'll either pick up on some of these defenses. Maybe you like what you see, or hopefully you'll see some that you recognize and then remember them for a counter. Obviously, you don't have to commit them to memory because they are all stored in PCRD fans. Okay, guys, welcome to PCRD fans. Let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys. And so this is the first comp we're going to be looking at. When I look at this comp, like I think the answer is pretty obvious. It's going to be a Miyako and a Nozomi up the front. And as for your other units, and this probably applies to like every single Tsumugi comp, like if you're not using an Ilya, you're probably going to be using a lot of range units. And the reason for that is that when Tsumugi Yubis, hopefully, hopefully those range units won't get displaced to the front. And so they are technically still protected. Although they are closer, they are still protected by your tanks in the front. Okay, first off, I want to say that this is not a regular Tsumugi comp that I do encounter. And if it were me, I would probably change out one of the tanks for Miyako. I'm just a big fan of like coverage. I personally think that this is pretty weak against archers. Like I see a lot of range, a lot of physical damage working on this. However, I could be proven wrong, especially with the Tsumugi into the Summer Pekron combo. And that is lethal. But I'm gonna stop playing Stalling Steven. So let's have a look over here. So, whoa, that's actually pretty close. So as you can see, Miyako Nozomi is very, very common, right? It is probably one of the most popular combos against the Tsumugi. It's just that Nozomi is so, so tanky and like everybody has her. And so if she gets pulled forward, typically speaking, it doesn't really matter overly much because Nozomi is still your general tank. She can still take so many freaking hits. However, looking at this guy over here, this is really good because like we've got a little bit of sustain, which makes a lot of sense, especially because Tsumuki is actually doing damage to you. And so you do need to heal that up a bit. And actually seeing these archers over here, I don't think that you can really use the melee units to actually beat these Tsumuki comps. Again, generally speaking, the Tsumuki is going to pull out like your Kari, your Makotos, your Hiyoris, your Tamaki, stuff like that. But yeah, this one looks pretty good to me. I think it's following pretty much everything I was saying before. Like you've got your Miyako because that's all physical damage over here. You don't need a single mage because there's not really any like physical mitigation on this side. You see a freaking cook. I see freaking archers melting it. However, let's see if there are a few more. This one's pretty interesting. We've got like Tsumuki into the Summer Pekarin. And so what you're going to notice here is that Tsumuki is actually on position two, which, which is okay. I think out of all of the frontal units, Tsumuki is probably one of the tankier ones. However, generally speaking, everyone's going to have a two star, if not a three star Tsumuki. And so I would say be a little bit wary about this one, but like it's 11 to four. So this one must work then. And then down here, I see this one, Miyako Nozomi, two archers and a healer. This one is actually really straightforward. Again, this is not really a common one, but yeah, you can completely see why the archers work and having a healer probably just makes it really all work. Generally speaking, a Tsumuki is going to take about like two to three UBs to kill your archers or your mages off. And so guys, with that being said, I reckon let's move on to the next one. Let's see what we've got next. All right, this one is pretty interesting and it's a lot harder to be honest because you've got your like two tank coverage combo. Miyako for the physical, Kuka for the magical, and then you've got like the frontal killers like you've got the Ninon and you've got the Mitsuki for the cleave. And so that's actually going to scare away like some of your Makotos, your Karis, your Tamakis. And so let's go down a little bit over here. So we've got this one, but it's actually all like juiced with UEs. The pattern is the same. You do have the Miyako, you do have the Jun, the two tanks. What is nice about Jun is that he does have like a single target heal. So your front line is probably not going to be falling to this over here. These guys, again, are a full physical team. And so the Miyako should be very, very obvious. However, then let's talk about the DPS. And this this is actually a little bit more obvious than I thought it'd be. And the reason is because you've got the Susana and the Yuki, which is actually going to make them go turbo turbo. And then she's hopefully going to kill off the Kuka. Hopefully after they've taken care of the Kuka and
and like we've got a Jun as well. Hopefully with all of that defense down and stuff, like hopefully the cooker is dead. And then after that, we've got the summon Kiaru over here who will be hopefully nuking down this Miyako. And so what's nice about this is that on this side, there is actually no healer. And so hopefully with just these two DPSs as well as a battery, like these two get knocked out real fast and then the rest just get wrecked. Without Zumuki, generally speaking, Ninon cannot reach these ranged characters. However, Zumuki might make it possible. And so I think that's a pretty good analysis of this combo over here. Let's have a look. And so guys, just having a look through, we've got this one over here. Now this is an interesting one because the Yukari is actually going to juice herself, I think. However, there is not really any like magic damage on this side. So I'm actually not sure as to like why you would do that. But the good thing about this comp is that the Yukari actually does have that like single target healing. So she can top up these two in the back line. And so hopefully the idea here is that the Zumuki is not going to actually be able to drag these two far enough to the front so that these two can cleave them. And so hopefully with all of that dragging action, Yukari can still top up like these two to keep them alive. But aside from that, let me have a quick look. There are a couple more, but I don't think there's actually many more to this one here. Yeah, a lot of the other counters are going to be like from future units. So like, let's move on to the next team, team three. And so guys, this one is a very popular one. We've got Miyako, Kuka, Zumuki, Yukari, and Skiaru. So let's have a look. Yep, this one over here. Okay, this one makes a lot of sense because like the only DPS on this team is the Skiaru. And so therefore, you should run a Kuka as well as a Nozomi. In my opinion, you could try a Jun. Um, actually, wait, they've got one over here. So this is probably something I would try like if I had a five-star Jun, so like a Kuka into a Jun. And the reason is because Jun is the second best magical tank, but not only that, she also has the single target heal. And so hopefully with all of that sustain, they'll be able to stand up to something like this. As for this combo, like the Nozomi is going to get pulled out and like she doesn't have too much sustain, whereas the Kuka, you know, she puts up the shield and then she heals. However, with that being said, let's move on to the DPSs. And this is a pretty Pretty interesting scenario. You don't really see Eriko used too much in uh, Arena. And so the Skiaru and the Akari are pretty obvious. They had to take down the Miyako. However, the Eriko is to take down this Kuka over here. Why you cannot use Kari is because Kari is actually going to stand here in between the Kuka and the Nozomi. Something that Eriko has that the rest don't is that she actually has a poison to do like damage over time. And so I think that's really going to dig into that Kuka and hopefully make it all work. But yeah, looking at a lot of these counters, like a lot of it is actually really obvious. It's just a little bit bit of fine tuning. Like for this one over here, Skiaru only DPS, it's 100% obvious for these two tanks. And to kill off the Miyako, I'll definitely would use these two just to defense down and hopefully like wreck her. However, personally, I probably would have tried a Susana instead of an Eriko. But these guys have done it. We've got an 84 to 9. Like what the hell do I know, right? <laughs> but let's move on a little bit and see if there are actually any other counters for this one. Because guys, this is actually a really, really common one that I see in Arena. And we've actually reached the end of the list. So I don't see any more counters. Okay, well, I guess that one's that then guys and the logic really makes sense for this and i have definitely used this one myself all right so with that being said let's move on to the next tab so yeah i've got like freaking three tabs of these guys all right so here we've got the stall one so we've got like miyako kuka tsumuki yukari and yuki and so for these bad boys there is a possibility that you do have a dps or like a, not a tank in position two simply because there's not really any real dps here however tsumuki getting her yubi off over and over again like i said if she gets like two to three yubis off she could actually end up killing like your DPSs and so that's really really annoying and if she manages to kill off your DPSs like then your tanks are not going to be able to kill these tanks and you'll get stalled out and so with that being said let's have a look for a counter look at this one over here I just knew it'd be something like this so you got your freaking Ilya oh my god I wish I pulled for Ilya guys I really wish I pulled for Ilya but yeah again these are featuring unique equipments but I reckon that this is going to work classic setup you've got two tanks you've got a defense down guy over here and so hopefully the defense down guy and your Shiori are going to take care of this cooker and then your Ilya is going to take care of the rest so hopefully the Miyako as well as this Sumugi over here I'm pretty sure this is going to be a pretty fast match like generally speaking you're going to just be dishing out a lot of damage but let me have a look at any other like potential non Ilya variants uh, or any counters without Ilya I don't know if they're okay there's another one. This one's interesting because it actually does not feature any like physical DPS aside from the Saren. However, the Saren and the Shizuru actually both do quite a fair bit of physical damage and I think they are enough to actually tear through the Kuka. It might take a little bit of time but like generally speaking the Ilya is probably going to crush like the Tsumuki and the Miyako first. But yeah, another Ilya counter but let's have a look at if there are like any non-Ilya counters. Uh, da -da -da. 
not one over here. I found another one with Ilya over here, but this is actually one with a really good idea. And the reason is because you've got your Lima like dragging them towards you so your Ilya can hit more of them. But on top of that, you've got a Mimi over here. And so she's being pulled out. However, she also has a Summer Cocker that's actually going to top her up. And so for you guys who don't know, Mimi is actually quite a strong unit against Cookers. Because when Cooker taunts, she actually eats both of Mimi's UBs. But yeah, I don't think there are actually any more that I can see. Yeah, okay. This one requires a six star, so we're not going to talk about that. So let's move on to the next team over here. So here we've got another store variant where you've got a Maho instead of the Yuki. So I would say you probably need a lot less tanks. Oh, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. This is exactly the comp that I was thinking about, except like instead of the Eriko, you would have the um, Kari instead. However, there is a chance that this is not going to work because like Eriko with her UE, like she is a real monster. I don't know if an Eriko without UE works, but like if there was anything I'd try, it'd probably be something like this. And so the reason that this one is more acceptable in this comp over here is because there's virtually like no damage over here to actually kill off your Makoto. And any damage that she actually does take, you've actually got your Jun to do the single target heal onto the Makoto. And so that's why I think this one is going to work. So if I skip through, I don't think there's going to be any other ones. Yeah. Oh man, Tsumuki counters, man. Ah, oh, Tsumuki is such a headache. And so guys, this is a weird looking Tsumuki comp. And so let's move on to the last tab. So you've got your Lima, your physical tank. You've got your general tank Nozomi behind that. And then Tsumuki, Yukari, and then the Skiaru. So generally speaking, we're probably going to see a couple of cookers. And so let me have a quick look through for a comp. So yeah, right there. Holy crap, it was so fast. Cooker, Nozomi, which is against the Skiaru, and then the Tsumuki to pull in front the Nozomi. And then for the back, you've actually got a Mage Melt, which makes a lot of sense because there are no like cookers over here. There is a Yukari, but like typically speaking, Yukari is a lot more effective against AoE mages like Eeyore and Hatsune and not really against like your single target mages. So yeah, if there was anything that I would try, I would actually try this one over here. However, looking at this comp, I feel like I've used this before and I've lost. And so that's kind of what I mean about like the RNG in this like... Mm, 23 to 8, like the odds are good, but they're not that good. Scrolling through, I don't think there's going to be anything else. Like everything seems to be using a lot of the characters that are coming later on. So yeah, I don't see anything else. However, actually something interesting to think about is that like that counter uses these three mages, right? So what if you actually took out the Nozomi from here and put in a cooker instead? That would actually really hurt this counter over here and it probably wouldn't work. And so that's probably one of the other ones that we're actually going to look at. Wow, yeah, okay, it's actually the next one. So guys, this comp over here is probably the one that I struggle with the most. You've got your physical tank, you've got your magical tank, and then you've got like the magical threat at the back. However, to take care of the magical threat, you typically would want a Tamaki, but like the cooker is freaking catching it. And so let's have a look at some of the different answers to this comp over here. Oh man, this one, I don't actually don't know if there are many. Okay, well, we got this one over here. This one kind of makes sense. So you got your Tumuki and your Saren for like the physical damage against the cooker. And so Hopefully with the Tsumuki, you can bunch them closer and then your Ilya can get double TP charged and then like chunk everyone. And so the purpose of the Lima is to actually let Tsumuki take a little bit of damage so that she can actually get her UB faster. In theory, that works, but like I just really hope that the Saren and the Tsumuki have enough damage to take out the Kuka. That's where I think the weak point for this counter comp is. Um, let me try and look for another one actually. And I don't actually see another one. Well, this is really interesting. <laughs> yeah, God, I I'm not surprised. Like this comp, what the frick is this? Okay, guys, wait, this is actually a really legit strategy and it's really really funny because like what happens here is that the Nozomi gets pulled in front of the Kari. However, personally, I wouldn't gamble this because if your Kari dies, like she will die really really fast. And so a lot of people are probably not game for this one. That's why there's a 2 to 2. But yeah, this is tragic. I don't see any other counters that like oh wow, okay. Well, guys, if there's anything that you've learned from this video, it's to run this counter. But yeah, guys, this is the one that I struggle with the most, especially because I don't have an Ilya, so like I don't actually know what to do against it. So generally speaking, I think I've actually avoided all of these comps so far. And so with that being said, let's go to team three. What have we got last? Oh no, so that's actually our last one. I actually saved the best one for last. And so that's really good. Let's end on a high note. It's freaking this team over here, this horrible, horrible team. But you know what? With that being said, I'm going to go quickly change my defense to this. <laughs> 
if you guys don't have Skiaru, do remember that Kyoka is an appropriate replacement. And you know what's funny? It's that Kyoka, generally speaking, also stands further behind, and so like she can't get hit like by the Renos and just like other cool interactions like that. But like, let's wrap this video up because like we've finally gotten here. I am losing my voice, and Tsumugi is annoying. I've got a secret message for you guys, and that is last comp because the last comp is the best comp in my opinion. I do think that this is the best defense. I could barely find a counter in here. I like there might be other counters that are just not reported but I see this comp and I 100% get PTSD because like I've looked for this comp before I know that if there was a Nozomi there I'll be able to beat it however because there is a cooker there like I cannot beat it and like oh my god it's rock paper scissors right but I don't have an Ilya I don't have my scissors boys and so yeah if you guys could drop that secret message down into the comments below I would really appreciate it because it means you've actually watched up until the end of the video and so thank you guys so much but otherwise please consider a like a sub a comment a follow you guys already know what it is if you would like to support the channel we do have some affiliate links in the description below as well as like a membership thing but otherwise as Tsumuki once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video Bye-bye.